Hi, this is Teresa Jackson with a Photoshop tutorial about smart filters. Just how smart are Photoshop smart filters? Or maybe I should start with what exactly is a smart filter? Well, simply put, a smart filter is any filter applied to a smart object. Smart objects are protective containers, like safe deposit boxes for pixels. Any pixels safely stored inside of a smart object can't be altered or destroyed. That makes smart filters non-destructive, and that's pretty smart. Let's take a look at what you can do with smart filters. As you will see, there is no limit to the effects that you can create. I can't even begin to explore the possibilities here, but I will give you some ideas to put you in control. I'm going to go up to the filter menu, and if we take a close look here, there's an option to convert for smart filters. I'll choose that. And then a sort of helpful message comes up telling us what's going to happen. And I'll click OK. And then take a close look at the layer panel. This um, background layer has been converted to a smart object layer. And we can tell that by the icon in the lower right. I'm going to go ahead and undo that with a Command Z. That would be a Control Z on a PC. And then in the Options menu in the right corner of the layer panel, if we come halfway down, there's an option here, Convert to Smart Object. That does exactly the same thing as this option, Convert for Smart Filters. There are a small handful of filters in here that you can't apply as a smart filter, and those will be gray. So we'll see Vanishing Point is gray, and if we go through these menus, the Lens Blur is gray, and if we come down here to Render, Flame, Picture, Frame, and Tree are also gray, meaning that you cannot apply those filters as a smart filter. I'm going to go to the Filter, Filter Gallery, and choose this Crosshatch Brushstroke, and I'm happy with these settings here, so I'll just say OK. Now we'll see that we have a smart filter sitting under the layer here, and we can toggle the visibility of this smart filter on and off by clicking on this eyeball here. There's a few other things we can do. This white box that sits next to the smart filter is actually a mask for the filter. So if I was to say paint with black, first of all I have to select this and we can see the brackets around it. So the mask is selected and if I was to paint in black on this, I would hide the filter by way of this mask. I'm going to undo this with a Command Z. I had a selection saved of the eye which I've loaded here. So I'm just going to paint black right inside of this selection and that is now masking out the eye. So we can see the eye of the lorikeet without the filter and the filter gallery crosshatch filter is being applied to the rest of the bird. Having the ability to mask a smart filter is pretty awesome, but we can go even further and adjust the blend mode of a filter. And you adjust the filter blend mode by double clicking on this icon to the right of the filter name. I'm going to change this blend mode to exclusion. And we'll see that really changes the look of this filter. You can keep going with these smart filters by stacking them up. This time I'm going to go to the Filter, Stylize, Find Edges. And that stacked Find Edges right on top of the um, Filter Gallery for Crosshatch. That gives us a pretty cool look. But I can go even further with this and rearrange the stacking order. So if I take Find Edges, and click and drag it below the filter gallery, that gives us a completely different look. Best of all, all of this was done completely non-destructively. If I click on the visibility here, I can get back to where I started with my original lorikeet photo. What will you create with smart filters?